Welcome to Indianomics. India's statistical system faces a crisis today. See, 88% of statistical data consumers. This, according to a study done by independent journalist Pramit Bhattacharya, who has just published a paper titled India's Statistical System, Past, Present and Future for the Carnegie Endowment. This paper highlights many well-known problems with Indian statistics. The decadal census, which was due in 2021, not yet being conducted to the increasing unreliability of key data sets like the GDP itself after doubts were raised about the corporate data that it uses from the MCA 21. Three, the government not publishing, very important, the consumer expenditure survey of 2016. And why is it important? The CPI and the IIP series are dependent on it and they are becoming out of date. Now, Bhattacharya's paper points to several other uh, you know, systemic problems like one, the perceived lack of independence of the National Statistical Organization, the NSO, instances of the government wanting to control the data narrative, conflict between the MOSP, the Ministry of uh, Statistics and Program Implementation and various arms of the government hurting the quality and importance of statisticians at the central and the state level, lack of financial and human resources. I can go on. But Acharya recommends, one, the setting up of a new statistical reforms commission to lay down a new stat statistical architecture for the country, but more importantly, legal backing for the National Statistics Commission, which actually was meant to act as a regulator of all statistics. And, and I think this is important, probably a CAG-like structure in the center and the states for statistics department as well. To discuss the problems and the likely solutions to this statistical crisis, and I don't think that is an exaggeration, I have with me the author of the report itself, Pramit Bhattacharya, uh, also with me, former National Statistical Member and once its acting uh, chairman, Mr. P.C. Mohanan, and economist, Ratin Roy. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Uh, well, uh, actually, let me start with you, uh, Dr. Mohanan, because you've been there, done that. Uh, Pramit's, you know, very concise paper in 35 pages telling us both the historical perspective and the problems that have gone wrong on several occasions. What would you pinpoint as the one or two or three key problems with our statistical system? Well, I would uh, say that, you know, the statistical system started deteriorating from the 90s. Uh, that is when the entire ecosystem of the data collection, data processing, data dissemination all started changing. But the system could not keep up with that. Instead of running to remain where they are, they just pretended to run. This is And Prometheus very, very correctly identified the issues, the problems faced that, because I don't go into the past, but the problems have been very well identified. Now, after the 90s, we find a very drastic deterioration in two of the biggest arms of the statistical system, the National Sample Survey and also the CSO. Mm. And then we have non-statistical people interfering in most of the data collection exercise. And I would take a lot of blame from the by the official statistician like myself in this whole process because we could not keep up to date with the evolving ecosystem, especially... Uh, the changing in the architecture, which is what he has rightly pointed out. Mm. And the Rangarajan Commission, unfortunately, I would say, gave a large number of recommendations instead of they giving a few very specific and concrete action points. It, it went into micro details of the system and suggested many things. And the government, as usual, went about and said we implemented most of them, but the key recommendation remained unimplemented. But, and, but the last 10 years, we have seen a real uh, problem in the system. One side, we have the deterioration of the existing ecosystem or the data collection system. Other side, the government uh, consciously trying to keep the system under control. Ratin, as a big user of uh, statistical data, uh, do you think this can be set right only if it became a political agenda? Only if government backs it, can we really change the mess? Well, when we say government, I think we are using too large a word. Okay. My depressing conclusion, and I'll give you an anecdote in a minute, 
uh, using statistics in the policy domain in India over the last 10 or 15 years is that it is the bureaucracy and the executive that is reluctant to see an improvement in statistics for the same old reason that bureaucracies are anywhere. Statistics get discipline and bureaucrats don't like discipline. They prefer discretion. So let me give you an example. When I joined the Finance Commission as a chief economist back in 2009, I discovered that central and state governments produced their own versions of GSD, gross state domestic product. And the Planning Commission produced a reconciled set just for the Finance Commission, oh. which they kept secret from the public until the Finance Commission report was published. Oh. For the very good reason that, because I was part of this, the way the GSDP numbers that were agreed between the Planning Commission and the states was a political party. Mm. You would say, you know, second cutting agriculture should be take that, third cutting agriculture should take this. was better in some states, worse in some states. But in the end, the reconciliation was fundamentally political. And that is not unusual because statistics is political. However, one of the major reasons why you would want to use statistics or even care about them would be if you wanted to do evidence-based planning and forecasting. As I said, I've been saying now for two or three years, the central government, the government of India is no longer in the business of evidence-based forecasting. Simple example. Let's ask anybody in the government of India or the Reserve Bank, what is the GDP of India going to be in 2027? Not $5 trillion economy and all that. Require no stats for that. That's a, that's an expression. Or what is going to be the structure of the Indian economy in 2027? What is going to be the contribution of agriculture, of industry, of finance, of services? No one has a definitive answer and no one is interested in definitive answer. Mm. When that happens, then all that happens when statistics comes out is a bunch of froth, which is people say income has gone down, GDP has slowed down, GDP has increased. But there is no particular policy relevance to that ecosystem conversation, which is entirely normative to say mm. government is good, government is bad. Okay. So when government is not interested in using statistics to plan and forecast properly, whether it's fiscal statistics, whether it's industrial statistics, whether it's GDP statistics, the statistical system is going to suffer. And the last stage of that, of course, has been the census, which I have a theory on, which I will not add. <laughs> but what does the government use the census for? Yes. What does it need it for? It has all the information it needs, encapsulated in Amrit Khan and $5 trillion economy. For the rest, uh, you know, uh, statistics is uh, only an inconvenience. Mm. And therefore, as the competence of government declines in doing economic statecraft, the ability to keep the statistical system robust is going to come down. It is okay. no coincidence. Okay. And Pramit brings this out so well <laughs> that despite the certain bureaucratic squabbles that took place between 1950 and, let's say, 1980, the government had a stake in the in the statistical system because it needed that information yes. to be able to plan forward. It does not now. And that is why a major reason mm. the system is addicted. Uh, okay, Pramit, uh, now to the author of the report. I'm giving you the last chance because I summarized the report a little bit. Uh, but you tell me, you know, uh, where do you see the rot first? As uh, Dr. Mohanan says, can something be done even without too much of uh, uh, political help? Uh, so I, I agree entirely with what, what the others said, that it's not entirely a political problem. But when it comes to the solution, uh, you know, the political good. leadership has to be a part of it and not just at the central level, also at the state level. So far, most of the discussion we are having about center and rightfully so. But uh, the evidence that I've collected suggests that things are far, far worse at the state level. And state governments, in most cases, are not very concerned about it, with a few exceptions. And one of the things I would like to highlight is the Madhya Pradesh uh, Statistical uh, Commission, sort of a Reforms Commission report, uh, which came out just a couple of years back, mm. headed by former IRS member Amitabh Kumlu. So if you just read that report, it lays down the, you know, even the lack of bare minimum, you know, computers at the uh, Directorate of Statistics, you know, a dedicated statistical officer at the district level. From the very bottom of the statistical edifice, there, there is no one to even take a look at it. So I'm not saying MP, by just by issuing this report is on a statistical revolution of some kind, but just acknowledging that, even that requires political leadership. And this yeah. came because the CM himself felt that this was needed. And okay. I know some are involved in it, and I'm sure Dr. Bonner would also know. Yeah. Uh, so, so that is the first step. 
Mm -hmm. Now, actually, you say that even Kerala is making <coughs> initial steps. You yes. said two states, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that is yeah. where you are pinning your hopes that hopefully, uh, you know, some state governments will move. Uh, you know, yes. actually, we also saw Rajasthan appointing, uh, I think, uh, Arvind Mayaram and uh, somebody else, I think even uh, Dr. Govinda Rao, for in certain advisory positions. Uh, and of course, uh, Tamil Nadu has uh, had a finance minister who was extremely uh, well-versed in financial matters. Do you think this uh, revolution can come from the states, Pramit? Yes, so there is certainly much more interest in state capitals, uh, including Chennai, where uh, I'm based now, uh, than was the case, uh, say, even five years back. So that's a, that's a big positive that I would take away. The second thing is, even in the financial sector, more and more people are speaking up today compared to, say, 10 years ago. And uh, while that has led to some controversies and the statisticians uh, may sometimes feel that people are questioning us too much and so on. Overall, I see it as a positive trend because these this is an important pressure group. Even Delhi knows that they can't ignore. At least the financial markets are one community they care about, uh, even if not for journalists. Uh, so that can act as a uh, sort of uh, important pressure group. And I do think that uh, the rest of us as citizens, as data consumers, who whoever, wherever we are based, I think we need some sort of a, you know, data users union uh, to sort of advance the agenda of transparency and accountability in the statistical system. Because see, this political pressures, deterioration of statistical system is not unique to the Indian democracy. Okay. UK also had such an example uh, between 1980 and the early 2000s. And after that, there was change, there was reforms, they completely revamped the statistical system, set up a new statistical authority, and which partly influenced the Rangarathi Commission. But the difference there is there is a Royal Statistical Society in the UK, mm. uh, comprising of statisticians, economists, and data users who kept on persistently asking the right questions, putting mm. pressure on the government. Mm. Without that kind of an outside pressure, uh, governments would just ignore this agenda because this is not something that is that is going to get votes. In. You know, uh, that's a very interesting point. Actually, two of these lobbies can get together if the financial markets and uh, professional statisticians together ask the same questions, uh, maybe the pressure will be good enough uh, for the uh, government uh, to answer. Uh, and will foreign investors, if they increase in number and depth, uh, start questioning and ask for more data? Could that be a pressure group? Those questions after the break. We are back in a minute.